Yeah, I mean, Mox and I, are, we, we um, wrote the initial letter that, uh, that triggered the formation of, uh, of the organization. Mm. We were sitting together one evening drinking a beer at the um, Weisses Kreuz, a uh, little bites restaurant yeah. on uh, Stadelhofen, yeah. near Stadelhofen. Yeah. And uh, we, wrote it, we wrote an invitation on the back of a napkin. And uh, I forget how we circulated it, because there was no email in those days. <laughs> this is what Zurich looks like while soaring over the Uetliberg on the west side of the city gently nestled between wooded hills and the shores of Lake Zurich, the Alps are close by. 380,000 people live in the city. One third of them are not Swiss. Financial services, a variety of institutions for higher education, a creative service industry, chocolate and tourism have kept Zurich going strong. And not to forget, Zurich has always been a worldwide hotspot for psychological trends and developments. But even if today Zurich is a privileged place, 30 years ago things were much more locked in and polarized. So let's have a look at the city in the late 70s and early 80s when process work was just beginning to emerge. Money is manifest in height and sterile glass facades. Power flashes in the red amber green rhythm of traffic lights. The constant flow of traffic brings unshakable stability and omnipresent robots watch over law and order. Zurich City, a huge office, profitable but unfortunately not fit to live in. ganz lächerliche Vorwürfe. Was wir heute brauchen, ist die Armee. Ich kann da nur darauf plädieren, ohne Armee kommen wir der Jugendbewegung nicht mehr und dann steht morgen die Revolution vor der Tür und dann haben sie den Kurs. For a long time, certain activists in the movement have been calling people to participate in fuckings and lovings without getting much of a response. However, on the 14th of June, their efforts were crowned with success. Friends hopped out of their clothes and held the shortest, the most good-humored and most widely reported demonstration that Zurich has ever seen. <laughs>
At the very same time, in a parallel world, just about five kilometers south of Zurich, a group of people was gathering around Arnold Mindel, a physicist and a training analyst at the Jung Institute in Küsnach. These people were enthusiastically interested in following their dreams and unfolding body signals while deepening a concept then called the dream body. Little could it be foreseen at that time that dream body work would gradually evolve into process work, a globally applied new paradigm for facilitating conflict, crisis and change. The unconscious is not unconscious. It's a potential consciousness manifesting inside my body, manifesting in me, manifesting in my relationship and everywhere else. And you love that. And I thought I was practicing just an extension of union psychology theory at those days. I was not the least bit interested in doing my own thing. I was interested only in extending and research. I had no edge figures at all at that time. I was just doing research, and it was so fun, and they all loved it. Tom Franz was, loved it, and, and all my teachers loved it. Everybody loved it until a certain moment, and then came my awakening. And the moment was when some of my colleagues began to say, Arnie, your students are coming to me and asking me to work on their body. They're asking me to work on their double signals in relationship. Arnie, are you practicing Jungian psychology? No, you absolutely. This is following the unconscious is what you want. And they say, I'm afraid we're doing something different. And so thanks to those uh, colleagues who were over the edge for me, for realizing that I was in the middle of something different, and that's how process work began. I was awakened to the fact that I was doing something different. It wasn't, but in a way, process work began in 1961, when I first met on front as an exchange student uh, from the United States. I was in physics at the eighth and a half, and I met her, and... And I, I said to her, I've got a lot of stuff. I'm 21. I need to work on myself. And she said, what is dream at night? And I said, dreaming at night? Well, can't you see the dream here on my body somewhere? And she said, I don't know how to do that yet. So in that moment, 1961, process work began. And uh, I realized the dream isn't at night, it's right here, it's in my face, it's in my body. And then I forgot that for another nine years until 1970 when I got sick. And then I started seeing the body and I realized everything that Jung had said about the unconscious was a physical reality as well as a, uh, what he was calling and what I was calling it a psychological or a psychic reality. So process work, in a way, got born when I realized physical reality and psychological reality, both of these things are interesting, but the words are no good. I need a new term. Process. 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 Uh, I have a process that manifests in dreams, it manifests in the body, and it's neither psychological nor physical. That exciting thoughts that, oh my God, I'm really studying process. So that's how process work began for me. It began in 1961 and again in 1970 already. Don Juan, Sammet Sin, Vorlesung Psyche. Und das ist dann. Top, äh, top neu gsi ja. und äh, das ist äh, der ist er auf äh, das Bund 
gehockt hat. Nein. Schon, dass ich schon gesehen habe. <lacht> und dann hat er äh, über, äh, über Don Juan erzählt. Und dann dachte ich, ja, das ist so nicht. Ende ist dumm. Das kann man nicht ernst nehmen. Ja, und dann habe ich äh, dann, äh, gesagt, mir zwischen dem ersten und zweiten Mal habe ich gedacht, es ist mir einfach geblieben. Es ist mir einfach etwas geblieben. Und ah. dann habe ich gedacht, es ist doch interessant und ah. so. Und äh, ja, so hat es angefangen. Ah. Und dann die Vorträge zu Don Juan, da hatte dann plötzlich 60 Leute gehabt und normalerweise waren da fünf Leute in einem ja, Vortrag ja. oder vielleicht mal 15, wenn einer schon ganz gutes Renommee hatte. Es war furchtbar deprimierend und das war natürlich dann plötzlich 60 Leute, musste er einen Saal anmieten und ich bin überzeugt, da hat eigentlich dann diese schwierige Geschichte mit dem Jungen Zino begonnen. Mhm. Ja, dann hat, hat mir das sehr Spaß gemacht und dann habe ich andere Leute getroffen, die eben bei Arne auch sehr viel Freude und Spaß hatten. Und dann haben wir uns zusammengetan, haben eine Gruppe gegründet. Ja. Da waren sehr viele Amerikaner dabei. Kannst du dich noch an Namen erinnern? Ja, Sally Jelly, der Trommler. <lacht> Seine Freundin Ellen, äh, Roy und Sherry Freeman und Joe Goodbread. Hm. Äh, Ellen hat gearbeitet, ja. da kann ich mich gar nicht mehr gut daran erinnern, aber dann haben, kam dann plötzlich Arne, der kam dann endlich. Und dann war das regelmäßig, das war dann ja. so eine Institution, diese Gruppe. Aber die Deutschschweizer und die Deutschen waren natürlich hier zu Hause, hatten zum Teil auch Familien hier, aber ich war die Einzige mit kleinen Kindern. Da habe ich mich immer sehr äh, allein gefühlt, weil sehr viele Treffen waren am Sonntagabend. Und die Englischsprechenden, die hatten viel mehr Zeit, um zu studieren. Die konnten die Bücher besser lesen, die konnten schneller Englisch sprechen. Und hatten auch, wir hatten auch verschiedene Hintergründe. Ich denke, die Englischsprechenden, vor allem die Amerikaner, waren viel lockerer mit Ausprobieren. Die und die Englischsprachigen getrennt. Und ein erster Schritt war eigentlich, dass man anfing, oder dass Arne anfing, diese Gruppen zu mischen. Und das war auch nicht ganz einfach. Auch für uns nicht ganz einfach. Aber eigentlich haben wir alle profitiert. Zum ersten Mal waren wir zwölf Leute in einem solchen Berghaus. Und äh, wir waren ganz happy und das war so unsere Stammgruppe, nicht? Und dann äh, haben wir gesagt, ja, ja, das machen wir gern, machst du wieder sowas mit uns? Und dann haben wir ein zweites Seminar gemacht und da waren plötzlich 15 Leute. Und drei waren nicht von uns. Und wir haben gesagt, ja, wieso hast du die auch eingeladen? Wir haben doch gesagt, mit uns. Und Arne ist so wütend geworden. Und gesagt, das ist faschistoid, was ihr da macht, das sind meine Freunde. Und das ist unglaublich, ich habe ihn noch selten so er erzürnt erlebt. Und das war natürlich auch eine ganz starke äh, Erfahrung in Bezug auf ähm, Öffnung diese vielleicht doch auch schweizerische Art des wir unter uns bleiben wollen und dann diese Öffnung und dann waren das erst noch Amerikaner, die, deswegen musste man dann Englisch reden und wir konnten nicht mehr so reden, wie uns der Schnabel gewachsen war und so weiter. Also das hat ziemlich tumultuöse Szenen gegeben. Also what has happened a lot in the school is diversification. In other words, there was a separation of that original group between some people who followed Ani and people who followed Nora. No. 
But there was a painful interaction that it was probably more painful than we could see was in relationship between Nora and uh, Arnie, where Nora was going for more staying with the conservative side, saying, as Jungian, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. And that was also reflected in the Jung Institute. Arnie was seen more as a defector, you know, doing his own stuff. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a concept that you have a new idea. Yes and no. I, I think I didn't uh, appreciate at the time how much um, that Arnie might have been under some tension and under some duress there. I think that I, I think I was more focused on his enthusiasm mm -hmm. for the new direction that he was going. I didn't appreciate enough until later when it really came to an open uh, confrontation. Yeah. Then I began to understand how how difficult that must have been wow. for him. Wow. But I, po I remember sitting with Arnie and um, a group of us processing the different roles in relationship to the Jung Institute mm -hmm. as we were building the school. It was in the okay. 82, 83. Wow. Yeah. Um, I think Arnie was not hiding any of those things. Quite the contrary, he was very open and talking about mm -hmm. it and seeking. Uh, mm -hmm. um, to become aware mm -hmm. by uh, w by processing those mm -hmm. things together using the tools that we had, using dreams, using the chain, using mm -hmm. everything that could be useful to yeah. pick up what yeah. we call today the dreaming yeah. and to see how we could yeah. how we could make sense of it in the CR. Yeah. Yeah. By the next uh, by the next treffen war dann diese ganz desaströse Erfahrung, wo er einfach Geschichten erzählt hat. Ja was? Sie berühren die Leute? Ja, das, das kommt gar nicht. Ja, ich kann Ihnen Videos zeigen oder ich habe die, die Einwilligung geholt zum, für den Körperkontakt. Ja, das interessiert uns gar nicht. Und dann, ich kann Ihnen Videos zeigen, wo das Ganze... Was? Sie, Sie, Sie haben Videoaufnahmen? Ja, ich habe eine schriftliche Genehmigung. Das interessiert uns überhaupt nicht. Also, mir kam das vor wie... Bei Bert Brecht, Galileo Galilei, der die Jupiter-Monde gezeigt hat, der Inquisition, und die wollten einfach nicht sehen. Die wollten einfach nicht durch das Teleskop schauen. Bei uns in dem, bei uns in dem Jungen Institut war es interessiert, in having a bodywork classes in there mm -hmm. at that time, no. within their program. And I don't think those people that were interested at that time in process work, or, or the dream body that Arnie had worked on, the body symptoms, wow. were all that interested in, in a more linear dream interpretation focused mm -hmm. approach that at the time was taught at the Jung Institute. So I'm sure there were a few tremors, but I think overall it was an organic mm -hmm. growing out of another no. branch. No. The, the grandparents were made grandparents just uh, around the time that the organization emerged. Um, and at the time, the only meaning of the diploma was that you, uh, that the body of existing diplomates mm -hmm. were in agreement with your mm -hmm. being a diplomat mm -hmm. and would stand behind you and would uh, further you and stuff. No. I feel it contributed to the whole grandparents thing was the faith that people who had already um, established themselves in various fields, but also had a burning interest in learning more about um, the experiential approach that he was working on. Mm -hmm. That those were the people who he wanted mm -hmm. to uh, to further. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I was scared somehow, and yet flattered and provoked to really. Mm -hmm. Look at it. He wrote letters to he to wrote, everyone. He wrote a letter and to you? Was, well, like yeah. the other ones yeah. too. Yeah. And uh, the conditions no. that you had to no. do to no. be accepted no. yeah. and so on. Yeah. Do you remember what what the conditions were in your case? Yes, but I don't tell you. <laughs> oh, little secret. Ah, come on. <laughs> little secret there. I asked, and it was 11 points, I think. 
Jawohl, elf Punkte. Und da hat er dann eingekreist, was man noch bearbeiten soll. Mhm. Mhm. Ging zwar zu Arne hin und sagte, äh, er müsse mich nehmen, wie ich sei. Ich mache es nicht, weil er hat mich immer unterstützt, mich im Junginstitut querzustellen und nicht alles zu fressen, was serviert wird. Und ich sagte, ich mache das jetzt nicht, weil du das verlangst. Ich mache es schon, aber nicht, weil du es verlangst. Und dann hat er gesagt, okay, du bist durchgekommen, ist in Ordnung. Aber natürlich habe ich es gemacht. Und well, it's all Don Mankin's fault. Ben Thompson, who yeah. was a teacher for many of us, and I really loved him, and I took his class over and over again at wow. Antioch College, wow. Wow. and he taught a class around the teachings of Don Juan through the books of Carlos Castaneda. So he read Arnie's original book called The Death Walk in his class. According to Arnie, they hadn't really known each other very much, but Ben loved Arnie, and he would often sit in the class and he would read from these manuscripts, from this manuscript, and I was awed and I wonder who is this person? So I wanted to know who was the writer of these amazing, this amazing yeah. book. Yeah. And, uh, and Ben, uh, Ben loved Arnie, even though they hadn't had much contact, yeah. but he, he really revered him. So I went to Switzerland at the time I was together with Adam, yeah. and that was in 1979. 79, yeah. And we came over, and I had never traveled out of the United States, and I was young, I was like uh, 20 years old. And uh, I, you know, I thought this is a really unusual place. <laughs> I came and I didn't know where to go, and I was utterly dependent on anyone's goodwill. And Dawn went to Zurich and came back and said, wow, it was just amazing, you have to do this. And I had zero interest in psychology oh, for Lord. three months, and which no. became just under 10 years. No. It was hard, <laughs> it was really hard. You couldn't rent anyone, you know, nobody would, you'd call up for an apartment no. and people would hang up the minute they heard your accent. No. And German, oh my God. <laughs> I said, I tried. I yes, it was a huge thing. I mean, in a way, well, um, a couple of my friends, Don and Adam, were there before I came. I think, and they helped helped me get settled. And um, but learning German, learning a new culture, oh, it was extremely hard. Except there were so many people speaking English that made it a lot easier. First, year, earliest years, I cleaned houses. I cleaned houses of rich people. Yeah, and that was kind of interesting. It wasn't bad. You can make decent money. After a few years, we got into this teaching English, and that became a real great way to make money. Like, I really made good money, actually, through the 80s, teaching English. So that worked. I worked at Migros Klubschule for many years. In fact, I sometimes see, like, on Facebook, students from that school find me, and they and they loved me, and they, I changed people's lives at the Miko Club Shula. Amy and I sang music, we played music in the streets. I oh. could, uh, we could play, I could play music uh, twice, two evenings a week, and earn enough money for food for the week. Wow. Yeah. We scrambled, it was hard, it was also hard. We were friends, and we had fights, and we had experiences together, and um, you know, got into hot water with yeah. each other, and, and uh, it was sort of living it, right? Eating and cooking. Cooking was cooking, <laughs> cooking, <laughs> food, yeah. And then we had classes on Friday afternoons and Friday evenings mm -hmm. with Arnie, right? Um, which also was a big community experience. Mm -hmm. 20 years. It was intimidating. Intimidating. It was intimidating. It wasn't always very friendly. I felt mm -hmm. that. Uh, I felt most people were interested in me as a client and oh. that there was competition to get me as a client. <laughs> um, and there wasn't always a welcome mat out, so it, mm -hmm. from some mm -hmm. folks who are older. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But I also understand it. They had, in retrospect, they had their friends, and well, you know, like I have mine. People might say. Yeah. Think back on it. Why wasn't it more difficult? Because how come we had to be the students and those teachers yeah. would get to be the teachers? Yeah. There was this big yeah. age difference. Yeah. There was this 15-year yeah. age difference. Wow. And at that time, I wouldn't have expected to be a teacher. I didn't feel like a teacher. I felt like a privileged student. I felt like the luckiest person in the world. I mean, I felt so lucky. I thought, like, how did, my, how did I get this luck? Like, how did my life turn out this good, that I get to be here at this time in this position? You know? And I felt very respected as a student and honored. Like, we had a lot of status, you know, as those original students. The, the seminars up in the mountains and uh, mm -hmm. living under real primitive conditions. Mm -hmm. There was one place that didn't even have a shower. Uh, there was another place which was kind of interesting because we were all skiing during the day. Wow. There was another place that um, had like a communal shower. There was like a big hallway <laughs> with showers and everybody used the shower together there. <laughs> That was it was quite a time, actually. Remember those seminars <laughs> that were only 20 people? Only. And that Arnie worked, they were like five days long, and Arnie worked with every single person. Wow. And, uh, or if there were supervision seminars, everyone was a client and everyone was a therapist. Mm -hmm. It was very intimate. Everyone, mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. everyone knew everyone's business. Mm -hmm. um, it was... Incredible. I'm an ecstatic, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember like long sessions cooking together mm -hmm. in the kitchen and singing and dancing and, and it was it was like a happening, right? And I have seen a shooting star race across the sky. If it can go so far, why can't I? And I have seen a rainbow in the sun and in the rain. Can I walk across it? Would I ever be the same? Oh, 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 oh. Or she for him, but also. War vielleicht wichtiger als die Prozessarbeit. <laughs> well, we, uh, most of us liked skiing. So we did a combination of, we worked on, we did a psychological seminar in the morning, we skied in the afternoon and then we came together for more psychology towards late wow. afternoon wow. and uh, evening. And then skiing was big too, yeah. you know, trying to keep up with Arnie, because Arnie was a maniac skier. Oh my God. And, uh, <laughs> And he, you know, if he wanted to ski with him, you had to just keep up. He wasn't going to wait yeah. for you. Yeah. It was a big atmosphere in those days of like, you always wanted to be where Arnie yeah. was and you always wanted to be with the yeah. group. And we all crowded yeah. around yeah. Arnie to, to learn, you know, and it was, it was both competitive yeah. and inspiring and a turn on. Yeah. And so, you know, Arnie skied, so you had to go ski so you could be with Arnie so you could talk and yeah. everything was constant talking. You know, but I didn't know how to ski. But so I thought, but nobody was teaching me how to ski. Yeah. I just went to the top of the mountain with everybody, just to be with everybody. And then you sort of like <laughs> fall down the mountain and find your way down. And there were crazy times with that too. I remember when I was at the first seminar looking at Arnie working with 17 people, I was the 18th. 
Well, we were 18 people. I, I organized myself to be the last one. I remember looking at that and saying, this is absolutely fantastic. And there, there were not 1% of the tools we have today there. Ani was just discovering, but the spirit of discovery that the man was showing and demonstrating in every situation, his gentleness, his kindness, and yet his firmness, I thought what was coming out was transformative. I hadn't seen that anywhere. And I got taken, you could say, by that stream. And my first impressions with Arnie was that I uh, was, I mean, like many of us have, was his incredible openness. Oh and that there wasn't an idea of what normal was. I feel as a young woman at the age of 20, I was mm -hmm. trying to really find myself. I had tried all kinds of self-help things and I felt that I never measured up or could succeed in anything that I tried. Mm -hmm. And here was this man who was more validating all of my inner mm -hmm. experiences and mm -hmm. wanting more of them. Arnie at this time was much more available, right? Yeah. And uh, we all had, I mean, Arnie was our main teacher, and we had the most exposure to him. Mm. And um, I mean, the, that's one thing that I think some of our students today maybe don't have so much anymore, is we had like hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, chances to observe no. Arnie work in the no. middle, right? No. No. To be worked on no. ourselves, no. at least so, once or yeah. twice a seminar. Yeah, yeah. And um, and observe them and discuss them and 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 uh, ask only questions and and studying together with yeah. him. So it was very experimental at that time, and just by sort of experiencing it over and over and mm -hmm. over again, I think that's probably how I learned the most. Mm -hmm. A lot of it centered the very early early days. A lot of it centered around your session with Arnie, mm. which was sort of like the point in your week. It was like the sun yeah. that you orbited around. And the thing that was just waking up and it was, it was, oh, it was the learning. It was the, th it was the theories that Arnie was developing were so interesting. And we were, we were his test cases, you know, we were like everything he was, every new idea he had, we were excited about. Yeah. And we tried, and we wanted to learn, and we wanted to work, and we were collaborating with this man who was so creative and so intelligent, coming up with these fascinating ideas, and we got to contribute. Mm -hmm. And it made it worth it. Um, parallel, a group of us with Arnie had met to decide about creating an organization or a school. And after two hours, we decided to throw the Aching, which said that we needed to uh, involve the um, bigger group. And so we had a meeting in, uh, in Kusnacht, I think. And we had a meeting with 50 or 60 participants where the, I, I think you know those stories, the Aching was, uh, mm -hmm. was um, saying a uh, work on what was uh, for Dorban. On the sport. On the sport. Yeah. And uh, so that was the idea then on working on relationships and working on the past issues and stuff like that. And out of that, the organization started to uh, grow. That's where also Ani gave the idea of Forschungsgesellschaft für Prozessorientierte Psychologie as a name. And we created simple state, uh, stat, statutes. And the idea was to create an umbrella so mm -hmm. that we have a common name and a common persona in relationship to other people and to other schools. Nothing yet very uh, strict. Then came immer mehr these ideas, yeah, vielleicht doch and eine neue Schule. And I have immer versucht auch nicht zu sagen, mach das nicht, um Gottes willen, das gibt viel zu tun. <laughs> und das stimmt mm -hmm. ja auch. I think the way how I remember it was that Marx and Joe Goodbread uh, sort of decided, you know what? If you guys are can agree on that, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it with you or without you. And uh, and they went ahead and did it. And I guess at this point, then more or less everybody joined. I remember it really well. I mean, I wasn't part of. I was still very young. I wasn't part yeah. of planning that first meeting. Yeah. But I remember at, in the 1982 founding meeting, it was a big discussion. 
Um, it was a discussion again around training. It's a discussion mm -hmm. again around these two different directions, mm -hmm. and it's a discussion now at PWI in Portland with accreditation. So for me, it's just a real mythic tension mm -hmm. around, you know, structure, no structure, you know, sort of being accountable to certain things mm -hmm. or trying to sort of mm -hmm. form an entity versus following mm -hmm. the flow or the mm -hmm. spirit. So. Mm -hmm. Forschungsgesellschaft und prozessorientierte Psychologie. Das ist ein Mouthful. Wow. <laughs> It was fun. I argued for it because I liked pop. <laughs> It amused no. me that we could no. use the word pop. BOP. No. 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 Uh, some people said it's not serious. I said, yes, yeah, that's the fun of it. <laughs> Who wants no. to be serious? No. You know, no. you know? No. it's like it's crazy to be like deadly. We, no. That's what they were, exactly what we were trying to walk away from. All ourselves at the beginning, the Research Society mm. for Process-Oriented Psychology, made us impossible to find in the phone book. <laughs> People were looking for therapy, not research. Als es schließlich klar wurde, dass sich Armin nicht hindern konnte, diese Schule zu gründen oder diese neue Richtung. Da hatten wir eben die Gründungsversammlung, von der ja sicher auch andere erzählen. Und ich dachte, ich möchte irgendetwas Irrationales einbringen und nahm mein Schwirrholz mit, das ich noch von meiner Ethnologieprüfung am Junginstitut hatte. Das hatte ich selber geschnitzt und schwang es während dieser ähm, Gründungsversammlung. I think one of the, the specialties of the, uh, uh, of the DEN community was that the organizational form, the outer form, was in a way less important. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a learning community to begin with, and people were interested not so much in a degree, because there was no degree. So the people who studied at that time wasn't, didn't people who signed up for a program with a final degree that uh, promised a professional career, so to speak. There were, it was people who were mainly interested in the learning and, 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 and the excitement of, mm -hmm. of starting something new together. And the creation of an organization happened sort of under the burden of the fact that more and more people studied and it sort of had become mm -hmm. some sort of a training program without being a program. Mm -hmm. Max und Urs darum gekümmert, dass zum Beispiel auch Ausländer in die Schweiz kommen konnten und studieren konnten. Das musste ja auch mit der Fremdenpolizei geregelt werden. At a certain point, um, organization became an issue, the, the whole thing about who had voting rights and who mm -hmm. should be invi invited into committees right. to do this and that, that became an issue. And uh, we decided to open up all committees to anybody who wanted to come and predictably nobody came to committee meetings <laughs> except those who were really wanting to do the work. Mm -hmm. Ja, wir mussten, wir mussten Standards entwickeln, wir mussten äh, Vorprüfungen entwickeln, wir mussten Abschlussprüfungen entwickeln, wir mussten Standards für Abschlussarbeiten entwickeln. Es gab zum Beispiel sehr lange keine Fallgeschichten. Madeleine Ziegler was our secretary and was running the office and really yeah. she was sort of holding us all together. Yeah. She did a lot of work yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine keeping us crazy people all trying to yeah. hurt us together? Yeah. Was, I don't know how she did it. In the Vorstand I was always the uh, actuar, which no. is a, I don't know, secretary and no. girl for everything. No. And when things came up, they just said, well, Madeleine will do it. And Because uh, Madeleine... Did it. And did, did it well. <laughs> did it well. Did it well. Yeah, I can yeah. stand to yeah. that. Yeah. I enjoyed yeah. doing it too. Yeah. 
it's something I, I'm good at. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the joy, the joy is there if you... It's, uh, it's uh, nice to have a work well done, yeah. or whatever you do, yeah. if you cook or if you mm -hmm. are a therapist or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. People start to realize more and more that behind every dreamer and, and genius there, there's somebody who do, does the day-to-day uh, -day work, yeah. you know, the paperwork, yeah. the uh, down-to-earth. Yeah. 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 The dreaming had a, a higher... Of course. ...higher rank. Of course. No. no. It has probably absolutely no. seen as a higher rank. Wow, who knows? I don't know. I had a big um, apartment with a with a workshop room on the Zentralstrasse in, uh, in Zurich. And uh, first, I used it as a machine shop to do my engineering stuff, and then I converted it into a course room. And uh, that was, in a way, that was the first uh, process work center, de facto. Wow. Well, one of the problems we had was that we didn't have a location, mm -hmm. right? There was no classroom we could all meet, and we were like meeting in Joe's workshop or, or in his living room or, you know, pl different places. And um, yes, my parents bought a house in Wollishoven and rented it to the organization. Wow. And um, sort of gave us a place to oh. be, to be and have oh. an office. And, oh. So a lot of people were having their private practices in there to mm -hmm. help to make it mm -hmm. possible. And there was a larger room, there was an hour group yeah. room. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah. Every problem that was around in the planet also was a problem in our group. The part that was exciting for me was not so much that we had these problems, but that process work and that army used a lot of these problems to develop new concepts of work. Mm -hmm. And we had only one lehrer, and that beklage I. For me, was that absolutely too many. And also, when the lehrer fantastic was, was very creative, was very charismatic. Man konnte sehr viel von ihm lernen, aber man kann nie von einem Lehrer genug lernen und wir waren zu abhängig. There was no theory of rank or there was no concept of meta-skills, so I feel there was a lot of group dynamics or insider-outsider and rank dynamics that just, it's the way it was and you just kind of figured it out and, you know, and that was a really big, and I think dual relationships I think was a really big hot spot. There was just, it was a, group of friends and every people mm -hmm. worked with each other and were therapists and teachers and clients and whatnot and it was kind of a, everybody was doing I mean that was the 80s and that's yeah. how it was and it was also a, a group in development so it's but that was that was that was a hot spot oh I would say success like in popularity like who, who were the therapists with uh, the most clients and who as we we're beginning to do our own seminars who could fill seminars and mm -hmm. stuff that kind of thing. I'm not really a good person to say anything objective about the past in that sense. I just want to say that and I want to apologize to everybody who watches that and says how can he repress some of the difficulties that apparently have been present and I'm sure they were because I have a tendency to forget them. Now maybe that's wisdom, maybe that's stupidity, you don't know, but uh, that's definitely... Well it's I'm also, sure. it seems like there's a great gratitude around uh, the way you're looking back and also unbelievable oh my yeah. god wow. you know i it, i have to say that um, i feel that one of the things that process work does in my mind in my experience is it supports you and helps you to be more who you are but the particular pressure pleasure that comes with following your own inner life and your own process a little bit 
an understanding that you are actually following something that's inside of you, I feel, makes life so rich and amazing. And uh, so I'm forever grateful. I think I just lucked out also that I made process work yeah. relatively early yeah. in terms of my inner life and my inner experiences and what it done to my relationships, what it done to my ability to communicate with different abilities. So, oh my mm -hmm. God, yeah, I, 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 yeah. it's fantastic yeah. for me. The amazing thing, one of the amazing things about us, the group of us original students, is that we're all still so close. Mm -hmm. And not, you know, a lot of us are still really, really close. And our relationships have developed something in those early years that has, have, has withstood wow. so much turmoil and so, much, so many challenging times and so many difficult times and so many extreme situations. And that we actually still share this unbelievably deep love and we're still working together. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. It's, it's unbelievable. I just want to say something. I feel like, um, you know, a few times in history, something like that gets to happen. Mm -hmm. There's a moment when something gets developed. There's a place, there's a time. Somehow, I, I can't believe, but looking back on it now, that I was able to participate in that. And I talk to the camera, to the people, in case this comes out, I want to say, I. I thank everybody so much for all the contributions they've made over many years and I value so many of you and what you've given. I love you all and sending you a big kiss and a hug. Sorry I'm not with you in Zurich and we, yeah, on a learning path together. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Tom. For the journey. Mm. Deep in the night When there's no place to hide I'll find a river Deep inside And all my dreams Will start to flow And down the river Back.